deliberate creation 101 say that again people are afraid to open themselves up too much because they're scared of energy vampires and yeah. The attachments yeah of having these these beings sort of yeah sap their energy and um and, and so they're all about protection and so then you're sort of closed off so how do you find that balance between being open and receptive and loving and protecting yourself? Well, the thing is that if you are open and receptive and loving, you don't need to protect yourself. Oh, good. Everything, everything happens because of energy alignment. There has to be a coherence. So misaligned energy doesn't attract each other it's uh it's like a magnetic pool that's why they call it law of attraction it's like a magnetic coherence so when you have an energy that's of a similar vibration it will magnetize towards another energy of a similar vibration so this is in the form of spirit guides and um, attachments as well if you're so we're, we're talking about drug taking before people that are cigarettes alcohol heroin dope whatever <laughs> addictions addictions if you have an addiction uh, it usually comes from a belief in you not being worthy enough you're not okay you've given up on life and you feed that addiction yourself but you also are fed by that addiction um francis key called it in the team books by these vibrational spheres. So you attract a sphere of similar energy that feeds off you and you feed off it. And within those spheres are uh, called these attachments. This is what we call attachments. People in, in um, people, energies that we recognize as once were people, we can call them uh, entities or energy attachments. They dwell within these vibrational spheres because they're a similar they're a match to that environment so think about it on earth think about where people live and the vibration and the thoughts they have like we group together in places on earth like suburbs and districts because we're a kind of more of a vibrational match where collectively think the same feel the same so this is why you have uh, rich suburbs and poor suburbs because people that believe in their poverty and their not enoughness they sort of you know we can call it economic because of cheaper housing and all that sort of thing but actually it is law of attraction that's grouping people together yeah you know, I've never had any money I've always lived in really wealthy suburbs <laughs> so there goes that oh, I've managed I've managed it every time I've managed to uh, rent places or live in houses that are beautiful and, and I don't pay hardly any money for them uh, so it's not really about the physical stuff you have but about your you know, your belief system energy the the vortex of energy that you're putting you you live in these bubbles and so it's the same with entities and spirits so if you're a loving bright loving person you're not attracting people that are feeding from addictions or because those people or entities let's call them because they're not really people let's call them energy entities are still buying into the thought forms they had when they were doing it on earth and they're attracted to people that have the same the same beliefs and uh so yeah but what can happen as a healer which i think happened to me the other day with the um the back incidents and like i was t t telling telling you that i was walking down the street and i had a pain in my back walking behind this lady i call her elderly but she's probably not too much older than me <laughs> i forget how old I, I see people my age and i call them elderly and um I had this really funny pain in my back and then after that straight after that I went to lunch and I felt like someone had plugged into me was sucking the life energy out of me so I sit and I sat in meditation and cleared any energies that were on me because sometimes your energy as a healer will be used for healing and uh, if you're not prepared for it it can be you can yeah you can, it can drain you um, but you have to be deliberate if you're feeling drained often as empaths if you're feeling drained of energy especially when you're out and about and not particularly thinking about anything awful like oh look at this lovely restaurant like we went to this look at this lovely cafe it's got nice food and like we were feeling good happy thoughts if you're feeling drained you have to ask yourself what's going on and then you have to be deliberate in shifting your energy so that's what i did at the cafe oh, i remember saying to my friend at the cafe like i felt like i was going to faint 
uh, oh my God, all my energy is being drained. Even thinking about it, I feel drained. And then I sat and just covered myself in white light and commanded any energies that are not for my highest good that I've picked up today that um, need to be released, be released now. Thank you very much. And just saw any energy uh, that was um, unwanted or not necessary, just moving out of my field. And you can send it into a, like a vortex or a sun. And Michael Tamora often does a rose, but I don't know the image of a rose. He sends the energy into a rose and then he throws the rose out into the universe and explodes it. That's that's his um, visualization, taking the rose and exploding it out to the universe. But I send it into like a sun so that it burns up in the sun and send the sun out to the universe and explode it. It's kind of just sending that energy back to where it came from because it all comes from the one source. And you can elect whether you want to participate in that energy or not deliberately. That's what deliberate creation is all about. If you're having a thought that is stressing you out, you can elect to participate in that or not. So if you don't want to participate in that, then you look at what the thought is, why you're believing it, and you shift that. You just change that. So you can do that with energy or you can do that with thoughts it's being deliberate with how we flow our energy and uh, when we are um, contacted by or attached, things attached to us that drain our energy, we can shift it. We can shift it. Yeah. It was interesting. After the cafe, because I remember sitting there feeling, feeling exhausted as I sat there, so exhausted I couldn't eat, which is so unusual for me because I love eating, <laughs> especially when I go to a nice cafe. <laughs> I was like excited to eat something. I was so exhausted I couldn't eat anything. And then uh, my friend finished her lunch and there was a shop behind us that sold Buddha statues and water fountain, fountains and all sorts of statues, a big shop called, I can't remember what it's called. And we stood up to walk towards it. And I remember walking towards it thinking, hmm, I don't feel exhausted anymore. And then we got to the shop and there were all these amazing things to look at. And I went, oh, wow. And I got excited by there was this massive Buddha that must have been 10 foot tall, a fiberglass Buddha. And I was like, oh, look at him. Isn't he beautiful? And these water fountains and, you know, all sorts of statues, Balinese statues and Hindu statues and all sorts of things. And I was excited by the shop and my excitement just like completely brought my energy back. I was like, oh, back, I'm back. So, yeah, we could get really deliberate. And we have to ask ourselves when feeling down or tired, you know, what is going on? Is this me doing it? Have I picked up something? Why am I a vibrational match to it? And you shift it. You can shift it. But people who are uh, happy no matter what, happy for no reason, love and light. I, I remember Michael gave me, Michael Tamora, gave me this um, analogy of your energy field. If your energy field is like a glass window, then the rays of the sun when they hit the window, they just pass through it. So it's like any energy, if you're like transparent, if you're transparent and you've got this big energy field, any energy that enters your field just enters and moves out the other side. So like energy through a window, uh, like a glass pane, it just enters and moves out. It doesn't get stuck in your field. You only feel it or suffer when the energy enters your field and it gets stuck in your field and you feel it because that's part of your emotional guidance system, you feel it because it's there, it's stuck. Uh, it's in your field. It's it's contacted another frequency that's similar to it and it's attracted and, and grouped together through attraction. So it's sitting there in your field, whether it's, as, as I said, an, an attachment, an energy attachment, some sort of energetic being or whatever it is and uh, you can deal with it in the moment become aware of it and deal with it in the moment so there's nothing to be afraid of when you know that you have dominion over how you flow your energy it's the same with life I think Sarah in the group posted Blossom Goodchild's latest channeling from the Federation of Light talking about um, some sort of fungus that they've been talking about for a couple of years and they were saying the Federation of Light, same mob that I talked to, although Blossom calls them the Federation of Light, that you can handle anything on earth when you know that you are one with the light, one with love, 
one with infinite creative potential, one with all possibility. So when you know that you are one with this infinite, loving, unconditional brilliance, infinite intelligence, then it doesn't matter what happens in this world, and a lot happens in this world, or what happens in your life, whether you get an energy attachment or whether you know there's some deadly disease you know throughout the world or there's an economic crisis or even a weather crisis you know that you are a part of this energy of love and light and when you know that then you can enjoy this world from that perspective and not be afraid of anything really not be afraid of upcoming doom and gloom not be afraid of of anything even your own thoughts and beliefs when you're believing a, a thought to be true and it's depressing you or upsetting you you can change it when you know the truth of who you are yeah knowing the truth of who we are is the most powerful it's the most powerful thing in the world because it just makes lies of everything else really like all the i'm not not enough not worthiness i can't have what i want i'll never get that you know all those stories we tell ourselves become they become known as the lie yeah known as a belief in separation separate to love separate to peace separate to joy yeah <laughs>